Welcome back to another edition of 5 Minutes on K-12 Online Learning, and today our with is Dr. Anissa Vega. Welcome, Anissa. Hello. Thank you. So to get started, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, I'm an associate professor at Kennesaw State University, and I have coordinated the online teaching endorsement there for the past eight years, conducted research in online learning, and then um, served in the local K-12 schools on advisory boards and uh, serving those schools as well. Right now I'm in a different role on a temporary basis, uh, serving as an interim assistant vice president of curriculum. Um, but I do continue to, <laughs> to work in research in K-12 online learning. And I have a family who's uh, with me behind me. No worries. And rather lab right now. No worries. No worries at all. Um, so in your role with the, the, the K-12 online learning program there, you've worked with lots of teachers who are just beginning their journey into the, the K-12 online world. And with this remote instruction situation we find ourselves in, uh, depending upon where folks are watching us from, some of them have been at this for a couple of three weeks. Others are just getting started or even about to start. Um, what's some advice you'd give them based on the things you've done over the past decade or so? Um, well, if they're brand new to online learning, I think I would have different advice for them than if they had been practicing for a while. So I think those who are being thrust uh, into remote learning, uh, the, the first advice I would give to them is to just pare down their curriculum to those critical learning objectives that, that have to be done to support students in the following school year. And even though there may be lots of projects that they love and other uh, instructional uh, outcomes that they pursued because of their own passions, I think it's best if they just slim it all down and let some of that stuff go and just focus in on some key learning objectives. And then, uh, and then even then, I would suggest to start with some, some basic approaches and then each week, just set a goal to try one additional thing. So, so maybe you just start with uh, readings and papers uh, or, or something that you maybe was very low level pedagogy um, in your face-to-face -face class. But then the next week you add in virtual office hours and you start testing Zoom or Blackboard Collaborate or some other tool. And then you try to use it for instruction. And then maybe you know, you add a, a um, online learning software tool. Maybe if you're teaching elementary reading, you might add Lexia or 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 some other um, tool that 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 fits your student profile. All right. Incremental, slow change. Uh, well, it's not that slow, really. It's all very fast, but just setting small goals each week to try something new. Okay. Now, you mentioned your family a second ago, and I know you've got, um, you're working from home yourself now. Uh, yes. You know, you and your husband are there. I know you have several children, almost, I think, all school-aged, if I remember yes. correctly. So you've got a bunch of parents out there now that, like yourself, are having to support their kids in a much more direct way than what they would have had to in the past. Um, what's some advice you would give to those folks? Yes, I've got a um, first grader a third grader and a ninth grader at home. Um, and it is really hard to provide them all the support that they need while um, also completing my own work during the day. Um, and really what I see with their age groups is the, the older one is more capable, more autonomous and the young, than the younger ones. And so I'm investing more time helping the younger ones than I am the older ones. And so one of the things that, um, that I've used that has helped me, I don't know if this would help everyone, but I've actually employed something that I learned from the Montessori model, and that's the record of time. Um, this is an idea where the student chooses the order of activities that they'll do that day, and they write it down. And so I actually have um, one of my daughter's record of time. Let me see if I can get it on the screen. Yep. Yeah. And the night before, she just chooses the order of her learning activities. And next to each item, she either has um, a C, a P, or a W. And so P means it's a printout, and we printed it out. 
Um, C means it's uh, one of the computer tabs. And then W means it's a workbook that was sent home with her. Okay. So, and I check this before the end of the night to be sure that tomorrow when she comes in, she'll have step-by-step -step instructions. All her things are printed out or the tabs are open for those particular assignments. And then she's more autonomous through the process and through the day. And we do that also for the first grader. It's a little bit more simple and her writing is very light. So I don't know that it will help um, if, I, if I show it to you. Um, but, but she's listed out the, her plan for the day, the things, the activities that she'll do similarly. Okay. So that's a tip that's really helped such that I don't have constant questioning um, throughout the day and get a little bit longer thinking time before I'm interrupted. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you very much, Anissa. This has sure. been a, another edition of Five Minutes on K-12 Online Learning today with Dr. Anissa Vega.